What up my freaks, Ruinous Insight here, welcoming you to part one of a brand new modded and long awaited Total Warhammer 3 campaign, Old World Mod plus SFO Vampire Coast. The community votes are in and Aranus Assault, spite daughter of the sea god, will lead the coast. And before we pillage and plunder though, a few quick notes if you enjoy this content and want to see it updated regularly. Don't forget to drop your likes and comments for the algorithm down below, as scheduling and campaign length are tied to engagement. Huge shout out to Venris and the SFO team, and to Chaos Robbie, Roby, for the Old World mod. The biggest of shout outs of course reserved for you guys, for all your comments and support. YouTube's my hobby, I do it for fun after work, and your comments keep it fun, and keep the channel alive. Anyway, we're gonna take a quick look at the faction and difficulty setup but do feel free to skip to gameplay if not interested all right so aranessa gets a reduction in diplomacy and fielding a norskin units as she is a, a norskin herself a mutant child that was cast into the sea to die so it makes sense as she wouldn't like the norskins all that much after that she gets bonuses for treasure maps rating and Pirate Coves in terms of income and, and gets her unique line of units, seven additional Mortal Sartosan Infantry and Maneater Ogres and that rounds out her roster, as well as the buffs for them, melee attack plus 10 and physical resistance plus 2% per veterancy rank. Lastly, she gets a little bit of extra character or a leadership effect, which will prevent any of the vampiric units that she has from routing as quickly, at least around her and a little bit of additional post-battle loot when laying siege, though I feel like it would be nice if this was just straight up 25% rather than when sieging in particular, though I'm sure it'll be nice as well. As for the campaign settings, we're going very hard, very hard, as I find that to be the sweet spot with the AI stats modifier maxed out to the max to give us a little bit more of a challenge. I've disabled the endgame scenario as I'm not sure that it actually works in the current version of the mod, and I really don't want it to crash and screw the campaign over at like turn 100. And we will come up with our own endgame scenario slash endgame game goals. Anyway, that's it for me. All glory to the algorithm, and let's get some booty. They know me in Norska, and they know me in Sartosa. But I want the world to know my name and my deeds. Alrighty, well the world shall indeed know Aranessa's deeds, and I do mean the old world, ha 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 ha, so it looks like the old world and SFO are both functioning correctly and playing nicely as the game launched, and in fact I wouldn't have uploaded this if it didn't work, so here we are. Uh, looks like we'll be starting off our first battle against a Tomb King's army, which will be a pretty interesting matchup, Undead versus Undead, and well I guess we'll give a quick read to how they play for those unfamiliar with the vampire co so we have access to shipbuilding aranessa will be able to upgrade her swordfish her ship and thus buff her army and recruit units through her own army regardless of where she is we have the infamy currency which we are able to acquire by doing various things like establishing pirate coves and winning battles and uh, and doing things to settlements and enemy heroes and such uh, which allows us to both purchase our own technologies as well as various upgrades Upgrades that we can get by selling infamy on the black market. Uh, we can win battles at port settlements and establish pirate coves, or I believe we do it by hero, and uh, they're basically under cities and give us various benefits, but most importantly, money. And speaking of money, we can also get the treasure maps on the map and go there, dig, and acquire additional money. In fact, looks like there's one very nearby at Lucini. Well, I guess we know where we're going. Well, I guess we were going there. Anyway. Anyway, and then of course we have the pieces of eight, which are a method of defeating rogue armies at sea in order to unlock the regiments of renown of our faction. All right, that's it. Let's head into our first battle. Obviously, cinematically, we have a cunning uh, gunnery white who thus has poison attacks and damage success chance plus twenty percent. Not too bad. Not the worst pickup. I don't know whether they have any kind of. Uh, 
Any kind of effect that would overwrite poison, but poison is a pretty nice pickup, especially against larger entities. Yeah. All right. Uh, you're gonna move into Aranessa's army, like so. Aranessa, we're probably going to have to summon a few units. I'm not going to bother with a bloated corpse, but a zombie part gunnery mob with handguns, and probably a couple gunnery mobs of the regular variety. I mean. In theory, this will probably be replaced by Sartosan Militia, which are just better. But for now, I think we'll be okay. Do we want a Zombie Pirate Deckhands mob? I think at 600, it's a little bit on the expensive side. Sartosa itself has a Lagoon of Drowned Sailors, which is not necessary here. We'll replace it with a growth structure, because we need to grow as fast as possible. Actually, speaking of growth, we're at plus 30 per turn, which is absolute garbage. Hmm... It'll increase once we hit here. We could also uncollect the income, but at 700 per turn, I'm disinclined to do so. Anyway, and that's about it. Let's pick our tech. And you know what? No, let's fight first, then we'll do a little bit of admin. I am way too excited to get into some fights with the Vampirates. All right, away you go, Aranessa. And oh, they have Ushabti with Great Bow and Screaming Skull Catapult. Huh. Well, that's interesting. All right, first time in a while that I've been wary of a first battle. Hmm, I'll have to watch out for our fragile elites like our deck gunners. And they could easily get destroyed by these two. Hmm, nice, uh, decent amount of range superiority for the enemy here. But anyway, away we go. First battle, Aranessa. Uh, let break a peg leg. All right, I couldn't quite hear what Aranessa said, but it was a uh, it was a very short speech. Anyway, here we go, our first battle, and I am excited to get stuck in with the Vampire Coast once more. Of course, we have our various mortal units, our Sartosan auxiliaries, let's say, as they will never outnumber the undead in our faction in general, and they are going to rush the enemy army in the hopes that any damage can coming in from the enemy Screaming Skull Catapults and Ushabti are done to the mortal units and thus unlikely to force a crumbling on the uh, much more fragile undead. We're going to move our Gunnery White, leading our two units of deck gunners through this forest here, where they will hopefully be hidden from the enemy artillery. Over on this flank, the Rotting Prometheans, the Krabby Boys, are going to charge directly for that enemy Screaming Skull Catapult and hopefully tie it up, or alternatively the same thing. Thing for a unit of scurvy dogs which are trying to get around the enemy unit and that's about it for the strategy let's see if it all works out Ooh, I like the uh, I like the fog it makes sense all righty deck gunners get ready to move on in crabby boys lead the charge with some zombie pirate uh, gunnery mobs following you all right, and it looks like the Ushabti with Great Bow have actually turned to target the scurvy dogs all the way back. They're screaming skulls, screaming overhead as they smash into our only unit of zombie pirate gunnery mobs with handguns, but that is probably not going to be enough. Sartos and infantry charge directly towards the enemy skeleton spears and will tie them up, mostly so that they don't distract our crabby boys as they continue making their way towards the enemy screaming skulls. Looks like we we are going to take a hit to one of our deck gunners, but they are getting into position. Uh, we've used our nets from Aranessa, the uh, spear fisher's net, to tie up the Ushabti with Great Bow, who will no longer and be able to apply their extremely heavy damage to any of our units. And it looks like our positioning is looking pretty good. Alrighty, deck gunners are going to melt those units of uh, Ushabti with Great Bow, together with the gunnery white leading them. Hopefully reasonably quickly it looks like the Sartosan militia or infantry are working their way through those skeleton units and the rest are tying the skeletons up which is also functioning quite correctly there we go as long as those who shopped you with great bow aren't firing we are looking good crabby boys are pinching those skeletons apart and preventing uh, these screaming skull catapults from firing as well I got a lot. You got all of the crabby boys. I uh, can't wait to get to the uh, rotting Promethean gunnery mobs. 
Uh, they're probably going to make up a decent chunk of Aranessa's army. In fact, no, probably about it, because they're just so good and so fun. Alrighty, looks like the Ushabti with Great Bow are crumbling away. We're charging right through them with the Sartosa Free Companies as well. And it looks like the battle is going pretty darn poorly for the enemy. Aranus is engaging with the enemy Tomb King, Amenhem, Amenemhetum the Great. And most of their range units, with the exception of the Skeleton Horse Archers, are tied up. But fortunately, the Deck Gunners are making very quick work of them. Uh, let me hear a volley from you. Ah, uh, don't move forward. And reposition, maybe. And fire away, please. Uh, it looks like for whatever reason this one might be slightly better positioned as it's uh, firing. Or, oh, the unit that they were firing at it got destroyed. And the second unit that they were about to fire at is about to get destroyed. As well as the uh, zombie pirate regular gunnery mobs are... A ripping those skeleton horse archers apart. The enemy lord stands right in the center of all this. Aranessa pops her spear fisher's net and allows the gunnery white and the deck gunners to finish the lord off rather than taking additional damage herself. No, she's still looking pretty okay. And it's just a matter of finishing off the enemy skeleton archers and whatever remains of the enemy skeleton warrior blobs. But I mean, it's a first battle. It was uh, it was never going to be difficult, but I think that this is probably the most I've ever had to actually think about positioning in a first battle. For pretty much as long as I can remember. As usually, these are designed so that you can win super easily. But it was very nice to see the Screaming Skull Catapult and the Ushav do a great bow. Anyway, just a few more skeletons to destroy. We're gonna move the Krabby Boys out so that they don't get killed by our own deck gunners or handguns. And the enemy is effectively surrounded and can't go anywhere. All right, uh, there we go. Very nice little fight, a close victory apparently, and I'm sure that we did take damage, but I'm also sure that the close victory was primarily due to the ammunition expenditure and not actual damage that we took. All right, a lovely little first battle. The lion's share of the enemy kills were from the Screaming Skull Catapults and the Ushabti with Great Bow, the enemy elites, which is hardly surprising, whereas we got decent mileage out of the scurvy dogs, but frankly all dog-type units are fantastic. In the early game, the two units of Sartosa Militia did... Hmm. About on par or possibly worse than the zombie pirate gunnery mobs, but to that said, they won't crumble away if they take damage, and Aranessa will buff them considerably. A little bit light on damage on the deck gunners, unfortunately, but they did spend a little while in those trees hiding away from the enemy, so I think that's about alright. Anyway, we got a ruby ring of ruin, which is relatively useless, but it's okay. We'll turn it into a useful item later on. I think we're gonna assimilate the captives in order to to hopefully if we can yes we can move to attack the next territory as well also how are we looking here uh you al dente oh you're part of lucini interesting okay so i guess we'll take this and then move on to the rest of lucini i guess in the early game we'll essentially have to make a decision as to whether we move up uh through the border princes and down the coastline of the Badlands slash the Badlands themselves, or northward to Lucini and Miragliano and, well, Talea and, uh, and Magritta and such. So, hmm, I am inclined to say we're probably better off going northward first, hopefully linking up with Clan Scryer and allying with them and before hitting the border princes down here. Mostly because Badland territory, unless I'm mistaken... Oh no, it's not red, but it is yellow. It's unpleasant climate. Hmm. So we can still go down there, but I still think that uh, Talea and Miragliano are going to be the... Uh... uh the better picks here. We can't even see them. 
But anyway, as for units, this is, uh, this is why Aranessa might be more interesting. So we'll have access to Sartosa Pirate Mercenaries, Sartosa Norskin Raiders, uh, Man Eaters, Man Eaters with Ogre Pistols, as well as Sartosa Free Company, Sartosa Militia, and Sartosa Carinade. It does seem that we do lose the boarding crew in favor. So we lose one unit, but we gain seven, which is still, I think, worth our time because we can make Ogre Armies and we can, well, if we can find an ogre ally, we can make really ogre armies, and we can make mortal armies, undead armies, it'll be more interesting. Yeah, and I think the Sartosa pirate mercenaries are essentially replacing the boarding crew, so, and that's fine. I'm pretty sure they're, uh, uh, I think they're Luther Harkin's specialty, unless I'm mistaken, so yeah. Anyway, I'm getting distracted already. Uh, I don't think we want to waste the money on you. How do we... Okay, the defenses here are trash, so I'm pretty sure we could just occupy it. I don't see any stance that would help us in an attack here. Income from post-battle loot. Ah, wait, so if we do this, if we go into parlay stance... We don't actually lose the infamy because we can get out of it as soon as we take this, so it's essentially a free income from post-battle loot, which means I should have done it before attacking. Well, oh well. Uh, we're gonna get an inspiring presence for Ar Aranessa immediately. And then we'll probably go into reanimated marksmen to buff up the rotting Prometheans gunnery mobs. They're one of my favorite units in the entire game. And Aranessa just happens to buff them as well, in addition to all the Sartosan. So we'll have plenty of crabby undead uh, to, uh, to round out her army and artillery. Anyway, to Befardo uh, you go. And close vic Really? This is going to kill one of our scurvy ducks? Okay, I'm going to play this manually just super quickly, though. All right, do we need to raise anything else? Nah, not for this. All right. I think this one we don't need to do cinematically because, I mean, what the heck's the enemy going to do with this garbage pile of units? They'll probably never even make it close to us. Um, but obviously, as with the... Uh, well... As I usually do in all my campaigns, any battle that I deem to be a good battle will be a cinematic battle. Alright, uh, so what do we have here? Is there an enemy lord? No, it's just a pile of skeleton warriors. Alright, deck gunners, you can essentially open up on the enemy pretty much immediately. We'll move you slightly away from each other to get the gunnery light here, and then we'll pop the gunnery mob. Alright, there. Alike. So, we'll have the scurvy dogs over on this side, and they'll charge one unit of enemy skeleton archers. We'll have the rotting Prometheans over on this side to charge the other. And then we'll have our melee units charge together like so, and like so, and fight the enemy units if needed. And then we'll see. And am I forgetting anybody? Yes, the bomb people, which are pretty darn great, especially against the relatively weak skeleton units, and... Alright, good. Start battle. All right, now, so you could just stay here. I guess you could try Ruby Ring of Ruin if you really wanted to. All right, you guys go forward 18 C bit. You guys position yourselves to go through the forest like so. Scurvy dogs loop around the enemy. Try not to, you know what? You're going to get hit like this, so don't. Uh, Aranessa, move forward. You guys move forward. Krabby boys, get ready to charge the skeleton archers. There is no way and that anything's going to happen to you. And let's watch the deck gunners and do their thing. I guess the gunnery white won't be able to fire. Right away, but that's okay. Oh, I love playing Undead. I miss this so much. Vampire Counts, Vampire Coast, it's all good. As long as I get to play one of them. Alrighty, and alright, you charge for. In fact, wait, no, don't charge forward yet, and you back off. Let the enemy get annoyed as they charge forward. You don't need to engage as yet, and I'm gonna turn off. Skirmish mode from the entire army. Krabby boys are in. All right, looks like one of our zombie units is in. Aaron has to stop these guys. And I will switch to just watching the battle in a few seconds. All right, you guys charge forward. Actually, no, not you. You guys charge forward. All right, you back up slightly, and there we go. Aaron, I say you want to use your can't move spearfisher's net on this unit of skeletons and attack in a little bit. Oh, I should have used it on the other skeletons. All right. And there we go, they are wavering, eh? Right, let's see if we can't get a few of those nice animations of her with her a weapon. She does a lot of acrobatics in her animations. And since she'll have a rotting Promethean mount later on, we should enjoy these animations while we have them. As obviously we won't later. Oh, I lost... I stopped paying attention to the scurvy dogs. You guys get away, my bad. 
That's what I get for uh, <laughs> for trying to watch the fun. Oh well. They'll live. They're fine. They're gonna be just fine. All right, I believe we're good. I'd love to speed it up, but now I'm a little bit concerned about our units getting uh, hurt here unless I get into combat here. And here comes some Sertosans to help you out. There's those acrobatics. We also gotta make sure we don't kill our own units with the uh, with the deck gunners. All right, you can fire in any direction. You are. Okay, you gotta move away. I don't really trust our own units of the uh, bomb guys, the zombie part gunnery mobs bombers. As a single volley is just as liable to kill off half your own unit as they are an enemy unit. And in this particular easy battle, there's no need to do anything. Oh, are you crumbling away? What's up with you? Oh, you are crumbling away. Uh, poor scurvy dogs. All right, we need to kill this unit before you crumble. Too bad we don't have a way to heal you as yet. I mean, a vampire fleet, uh, fleet captain rather than admiral. Oh, come on, 16 units on them. Are they actually dying slower than our scurvy dogs are? Oh, <laughs> uh, yeah, I, I did this to myself. It's okay, we'll, uh, we don't need the scurvy dogs. Or we'll replace them, rather, with the raised dead. <laughs> ah, that's what I get for looking away. All right, more importantly, this should be the entire province of Sartosa, which has two settlements now rather than the one I'm used to. And we're all used to, by and large. All right, Dead Man's Chest. Armor plus 20 assigned unit and leadership plus 10. Oh, that ain't bad. And that ain't bad at all. Occupy the place. And I wonder who we can put this on, as in if there is any kind of... Oh, they survived. Well, fantastic. And we'll probably get another one of them anyway. Alrighty. Mafarda, we're immediately going to go into growth with you. The growth here is so incredibly slow. And we're going to go dredge the sea for even further growth as we want to max it out. Since we have a port here, we're able to build more Sartosa militia, like so. And do we need any more Sartosa Free Company? Probably not in this army, to be perfectly frank. I prefer to just use the militia. And they're just better. I feel like the Sartosa Free Company should be just a teensy bit cheaper. And yeah, they have greater weapon strength and slightly greater melee attack, but at the cost of the missile damage and fire while moving at that. So, yeah. Yeah, you know what? Just build another Sartosa. Oh! It basically takes all of our cash, eh? Mm, okay, well, it is what it is. Anyway, uh, reload time reduction for all artillery and for missile units. All hands fire, that's what we're getting. And range for Heroes Army, we gotta get that as soon as we possibly can. Gotta love those Gunnery Whites. Alright, and as for the techs that we are going to choose... I, I want to say it's Salvage Cruise that has the good stuff. Well, yeah, so Raised Dead cost minus 20%, pretty significant. Uh, supernatural Regeneration, Constant Casualty Replenishment Rate plus 5, and Armies Replenish in Foreign Territory. Both are very, very nice. Ship's Carpenter, I believe. Yeah, construction costs minus 50% for shipbuildings, which is pretty darn crazy. Yeah, we're going to go for Salvage Crews first. There's going to be good stuff in Command Crews as well, but I think Gunnery Crews is the less useful one. And just generally speaking, just taking a quick look. It's been a while since I've played the uh, uh, Vampire Coast. Steady your aim. 20% range for zombie pirate gunnery mobs. That's quite nice. Mm, part code control plus two over dominion over mortals that's nice um, but yeah it does look like the salvage cruise one is just generally going to be a little bit better i do like the upkeep reduction on basically everything that we're going to be building other than sartos and units and campaign movement range increase by 25% at C, plus another 20%. Yeah, all right. Well, we're obviously going to get both, but I wanted to take a quick look. You can build a dart launcher. Range plus 5, four plus 2% for army, and gained infamy 20% per turn. So go for that. And we'll build a probably growth or movement range thing. As soon as we actually have the growth here. Otherwise, I believe we're good to go. Let's double check diplomacy. Uh, who do we have nearby? Lucini, who we are doubtless going to be attacking. And the Vulture Fleet, who we are doubtless going to be destroying. Oh, wait. They have 
two territories. Okay, so they have another territory here, which indicates that... Man, looks like settlements are going to be quite or quite a bit further away in this uh, campaign map than in Immortal Empires. Hmm. This may actually inform us as to how we proceed a little bit. And what I'm thinking is we don't want to spread ourselves too thin in the early game, as we'll only have one army for a while. We may want to just raise the second territory that belongs to these guys. I'm going to see what's over there. Oh, I'm, I'm so excited to relearn the map. SFO, thank you, thank you. Always thank you to SFO. Aranessa, ooh, we have a shipwreck here. We'll send you there, but I think we should also continue recruiting. Uh, we'll probably want at least one more scurvy dog, which we can get right now. I guess we could get a next turn. Actually, wait, can we get a next turn? One second. Befardo and Sartosa. So try to move here to Sartosa. I want to see whether we can raise these scurvy dogs at Sartosa itself. Yes, we can. Okay, good. You might be right. You are gonna move here, and you probably want to encamp stance. Oh, actually, encamp stance doesn't increase your casualty or punishment rate. Well, that's a shame for you. Stance parlay does, but at a loss of infamy, probably not worth our time. I actually, don't know what happens if you get below uh, zero. Either way, we'll get one scurvy dog next turn, and then we'll go for one Sertosa Militia, and I'd like to get, if possible, another zombie pirate gunnery mob. So we'll do that as soon as we can. We're also going to get a Root Marcher, because we need to move as far as we can, clearly in this particular uh, in this particular map in particular. I said particular a lot. And we're going to go for growth right here, tree and noose. And we'll be able to upgrade Sartosa to level 1, or tier 2, rather. Next turn. We're going to need the Peg Street Pawn Shop ASAP, which will be available at tier 2. Reload time reduction plus 2% per rank achieved for all Sartosan and Maneater units. Lovely for Aranessa's own army. Alright, you can now have that scurvy dog, and sadly we don't have the zombie pirate gunnery mob available. But I'm sure we will later. Alright. And away you go, Aranessa. Your oh, one of your units of scurvy dogs are badly damaged, but oh well. I like so. And we'll upgrade Sartosa to Shanty Town, and then we'll upgrade Befardo as soon as possible. We're going to keep the growth up and running here as well. All right. Anything changing with regards to Diplo? With all these new factions on the field, got to be wary of this. And huh. Interestingly enough, it seems that Lucini doesn't hate us. Hmm. But their their territory is far too valuable. Which means we have to attack them. We effectively have no choice. Unless we want to do one of those vampire coast runs where we don't actually attack. Or we actually... Well, okay. Uh, where we don't actually take any territory, but that's not going to happen. We'll build our own vampire coast. In the old world. All right, and let's see, is this a battle here at the shipwreck? And indeed, explore the island. Let's see what we're looking at here. Uh, Pyrrhic victory, ooh, oh. Ah, uh, no, I was, I was, for a second, I was like, wait a second, are we able to capture the enemy artillery? But I don't think we are. Uh, yeah. Hmm. All right, well, dead man's chest, plus 20% or plus 20 army, armor, army, armor is going to go on i'm the most wary of losing the deck gunners so i think it's probably them or i could put it on one of the sartos and units i'm very wary of the artillery pieces destroying our stuff you know what put it on one of you because you're going to charge forward and take a lot of hits for us all right and i think we'll fight this one cinematically because frankly we're not going to see a lot of uh, of uh, Vampire Coast on Vampire Coast action as Silostra is very, very far away, and if she survives, we might be able to get fed her. Anyway.
Alrighty, ooh, we've got a very nice uh, visible map, a nice little uh, sandy location, a nice beach for the uh, pirates to do their thing on. The thing, though, is trying to dodge carronade and mortar shots. It'll be a while before we get our own artillery of the same variety, or at the very least the carronades. Uh, the mortars are tier 2, so we should be able to get them on the field fairly quickly, but... We'll be having a little bit of trouble with enemy armies that field artillery until we get our own. All right, at least with that shot missed, we're going to back off with our first unit of Sartos and Militia as both of the enemy mortars, or both of the enemy artillery pieces, rather, have been targeting them in particular. As usual, our Krabby Boys lead the charge into the enemy dead. Together with Aranessa, who tries to move forward to engage the enemy lord, and is successfully doing so. Although the enemy lord has called for a little aid. It's almost odd to see Aranessa without that uh, rotting Promethean mount, but once again I do like the, uh, uh, the acrobatics of her attacks. Fairly fun and extremely impressive that she's, been, she's able to do that on those uh, two peg legs, those sawfish... Uh, uh, peg legs that she has. Very nice. Alrighty, how's the rest of the army going? We managed to engage a zombie pirate deckhands uh, mobs here with the Sartosa Free Companies, but more importantly, have managed to tie up the enemy artillery with our scurvy dogs, which will destroy it shortly, and both of the enemy flanks are going to get crushed by our Sartosa militia, who can run in and fire into the backs of the enemy units as well. Good job to the scurvy dogs. Unfortunately, Vampire, well, fortunately in this one rare case, a Vampire Coast artillery crew are extremely fragile, so and they die super quick. And so do our deck gunners, so I've been very careful with uh, trying not to get them killed, which is why they were all the way back there, and which is why I didn't have them in range of the enemy artillery. I guess one of the nice things, another one of the nice things about Sartosa is that in the early game, because you're using the mortal units, uh, when you're actually facing off against island and vampire coast stuff, you can actually tell your units apart from the enemy units, which we normally wouldn't be able to, as they'd be, well, too samey. Anyway, looks like Aranessa has... Oh, camera. You go, you go screwy. Uh, Aranessa has pretty much defeated the enemy lord, and ooh, looks like she got uh, the final blow as well. Textures are going crazy, but they do have a tendency on certain uh, map types. I think island maps in particular have a bad tendency to do those. But this, I think, has been around since Total Warhammer 1, so I doubt that it'll get fixed. Anyway, nice kill on the enemy lord, Aranessa. Now it's just a simple matter of mobbing the remaining zombies. Oh, nice kick from the, uh, nice kick from these guys, from the Sartosa Militia. Couldn't tell if it was Militia or Free Company. But I guess they're uh, following Aranessa's moves, and why is there a hand cannon up in the air like this? Oh, the guy who... Did you just kick somebody's head off? Huh, very nice. But I suppose it would be a thing that you could do against the zombie. Very nice, though. Uh, alrighty. Anyway, a decisive victory this time. We've barely taken any damage, I think. And I guess another effective use of our gunnery Sartosa militia. Let's see if we can take one of these artillery pieces. I don't think so, but who knows. All right, not too bad, and as suspected, we weren't able to steal the artillery pieces, though I do wonder if the dead rose again, or the dead rose and the artillery pieces were alive, would we have been able to steal them? Hmm. I'd love to take the money, but unfortunately right now our casualty replenishment is basically non-existent, so we're going to have to assimilate the captives instead. And oh, well, that's what the swordfish looks like. It's quite nice. Quite nice indeed. Alrighty, only a miserly hoard of treasure will be received. Alright, so we're finding some treasure and a 8k. Now that is worth our time. Uh, what I would like to see is where these treasures are. Oh, this one we will probably never get to. It's quite far. 
I mean, I suppose if we send somebody down the coastline to go up here, maybe, but this is close to Erengrad, and frankly, I doubt it. I sincerely doubt it, but anyway. Uh, you should probably land, and what we need you to, where we need you to land is close to here, so I think we have no choice but to pop you into full speed stance and go out here. Ah, oh, we do have the zombie powered gunnery mob, though. Which we do need to actually have some more range in this, at least until we get access to artillery. Pop that, move in, and we'll be trespassing on Lucini's territory, but considering we're going to attack them anyway, I don't see how we can avoid it. Let's upgrade Bufardo while we're at it, and we'll keep the growth here until we're tier 3 at both settlements, by which point we may switch to control. Although actually, Sartosa itself, by virtue of... The Smithy's Tavern will get us a plus 10 control, so we don't actually need control things here, or at least we won't once we're at tier 4. But on the other hand, tier 4 is going to take a while. Anyway, well done, Aranessa. Uh, we will also want to get one of the fleet lords as fast as possible. We don't have the income for it as yet, though we will. Not to worry. Uh, you, PT. I'm trying to get to Lucky Spyglass ASAP, so let's go Missile Strength Upgrade. Or generally speaking. And what do we need to do to get the right for Queen best? Rank 12 with your faction leader. Alright, well. 500 gold per turn. But I'm sure, I'm very sure, it'll be worth our time. Curse of Green Mist will also give us campaign movement range. Alas, the Vanguard deployment will not apply to most of our units. So this will... Not be super useful to us at the current time. Hmm. Oh, not one turn, but rather one treasure map mission. All right, so after we take Lucini. All right, end turn. And let's see if these guys move an army into Aldente, because if they don't, we'll just ignore them. And by ignore, I mean auto-resolve. Well, actually, it'll kill off our scurvy dogs again, won't it? You're gonna screw us on that one again, ain't you, game? And you're gonna pop into parlay stance and still be able to reach the enemy settlement. Alright, let's see what we're looking at here. Can we? Nope, it'll kill off the scurvy dogs. And it'll probably damage everybody else heavily. How heavily? I don't know. We would be able to raise another scurvy dog, but at 1,400 gold for a single scurvy dog, it's not worth our time. Alrighty, I guess we'll fight this one manually real quick as well. Yeah, manual. This, this one isn't really worth our attention. I'll try my best to speed through this little mini fight. And... huh. What if we should just move up the... Uh, move up the tree line so as to not get actually hit by the enemy artillery piece. I suppose we just send our scurvy dogs at it as well. While the crabby boys and the Renessa just charge forward. Alrighty, so. Hey, Renessa, riding Prometheans, here. You are gonna charge forward ASAP. You, Gunnery White, are gonna move in as well. And we're gonna keep you guys out of the firing line altogether because you're too fragile. Uh, hmm. A little bit far. Alright, well, either way, scurvy dogs are right behind the enemy art- Oh, they put their artillery piece in the middle of their formation. Neat. And neat, neat, neat. Alright, you're gonna do this. And you're gonna do this out of range. Or, wait. We could try up here. Ah, we could wait until everybody else moves in. I know I said I'd quick speed this, but... <laughs> It's going to take a few extra seconds. All right, good enough, good enough, good enough. Start battle, go. Uh, you guys go here, scurvy dogs. You can be group two. Get ready to move, and as soon as the enemy artillery piece is distracted... Oh, and it looks like it's turning. Now let's send forth our Sartosa militia right here. You guys can be group three. And you can fire on the enemy tomb prince. And Sartosa militia, you are not in skirmish mode. Fantastic. Scurvy dogs have shown themselves. But it's the artillery piece we care about. Well, I suppose the enemy range units could be here aboutable as well. All right, rest of the army move forward. Speed up to max for a few seconds. All right, they're going to get at least one shot off, probably on our Sartosan militia. Can't see who they're firing at exactly yet. Will they? They're loading the skulls. Ah, oh, we might be able to stop them from firing. 
All right, come on. Don't let him fly here. No, it looks like we're okay. Lovely. All right, you guys charge for skeleton archers, please. In fact, do you, since your damage, go here and then charge him in the back. Aranessa is in Rampage, probably. Yeah, Curse of Jaff is up and running. All right. The rest of you move on in. And we should be just fine. Ow. You're fighting the enemy Tomb Prince. I would love to activate our abilities on you, but that ain't happening right now. Yeah, for a little while, at least in the early game, we're going to need to make sure that we fight carefully and that uh, we don't take too much damage. As otherwise, we're going to have a problem. All right, you can buff yourself and debuff the enemy Tomb Prince. I should have used those abilities before actually charging forward. All right, you guys get into melee. They're only skeleton warriors. They're not super concerning. The enemy Tomb Prince is fighting Aranessa, but at half HP. You should still have it. In fact, a couple more hits will bring said Tomb Prince down. And I think away he goes. Alrighty, and the battle should be ours any second now. I don't think we want the scurvy dogs to charge in. I love the scurvy dogs, I really do, but they're frankly kind of a liability. Okay, I'll be you get away from there. They're a liability in the sense that they won't essentially allow us to auto-resolve ever. So as soon as I can replace them, I will. Just because there's going to be a lot of battles that don't seem super necessary. Anyway, Krabby Boys are doing their thing. It's such a useful unit, and we'll probably get a couple more. I think the basic ones are Tier 2 as well. It'll be a while until we reach the Promethean Gunnery mobs, which are Tier 4. But these guys are more defensive anyway, so they'll serve their purpose. Especially with that missile resistance that Aranessa will give them once she reaches a high enough level. Speaking of reaching her levels, we may also want to consider saving a decent amount of points so that when she's level 12, we just get all the good stuff. Alright. Surprising amount of undead on undead action here, even if it ain't uh, Vampire Coast on Vampire Coast, but that's the way I like it, as much asymmetrical gameplay as possible, as that's what makes this game so great. Alrighty, and the last of the enemies are going down, and not in a good way, it also looks like... I'll just speed it up. Uh, it looks like they will not have enough casualties to be able to summon their Rushabti through the Tier 3 Realm of Souls. All right, and 16 losses. Yeah, this should have been auto-resolvable. It really should. In, in future episodes, I may cut little tiny battles out that are, like, of this nature. Oh, a Brass Cleaver. Very nice pickup. Very, very nice indeed. Uh, what was I saying before I got distracted by the Brass Cleaver? Oh, yeah, these little tiny battles. I may just cut them out. A Great Hoard of Treasure can be found at where we currently are. Oh, fantastic. Right Unlocked, Curse of Eternal Service. And that is the control and recruitment, which we don't currently need, but it's certainly something we can keep an eye on. Uh, do we need Move and Trange to use Dig for Treasure? Let's go we do not. There we go. A Great Horde of Treasure, Treasure Map Deciphered. Lovely. 10,000 gold and an armor of fortune. Oh, wellity, wellity, wellity. Uh, Curse of the Sea Mist also unlocked, which we just decided wasn't uh, super helpful to us, but it's fine. You can go back into the settlement, Aranessa, and... Mm, you're at level 4. We could get up to level 7. Mm, yeah, maybe. And they can get up to level 7 by putting points into reanimated marksmen just to get more damage. It won't apply to Sartosan units, which is why we need the uh, uh, the unique line that Aranessa has. But in fact, her unique line doesn't actually buff... Oh, it's this that buffs Sartosan units. Oh, it's rank 9. Oh my. Okay, yeah, I think we're just going to need to save points right now. We can live without it, especially since we're not using too many of the uh, zombie... Uh, Zombie gunners, well, just as many as the mortal gunners, but, you know, it's only for now. Anyway, Aranessa, I would love for you to build the top gallant royal because plus 15% movement range is pretty massive. And I believe that's all you can build. Let's check back on Sartosa itself as well, and there is nothing to be built there. All right, next up, yeah, Pav Pavizano. Eh, you're running to peace out. 526, probably not worth it. Man, we should probably destroy them. I... Hmm. 
But there may not be much reason to hold this territory. Monte Castello. Huh. Alright, what we might want to do is take Pavazano temporarily, trade it to Monte Castello, or raise it for 500 infamy, so that we can get a tech up and running. Haven't decided on that yet. Hmm. If we trade it to these guys, well, uh, you know what? We'll see. It really depends on what we can get out of it. If we can get, like, an agreement, a trade agreement, and money, I'd rather do that while we go up this coastline. At least until we can get a second army on the field. Anyway, Arnissa, in turn, please. Very happy about that brass cleaver, I gotta say. And I do imagine that these guys will actually have an army waiting for us here, so we'll probably have to give a fight to them. I'm very eloquent today. It's after work, guys. <laughs> Don't expect me to be the most eloquent on a, uh, on a work day. Or on any day. All right, anyway. Uh, Aaron Nessa, you cannot reach Pavazano in one I round, and ooh, you yeah, can't heal up. Bring Rating doesn't friends. help in that regard either. Hmm. It reduces upkeep, but only by 300, which ain't that much. It does give unit and character experience rate. Don't collect the income here. And what the heck do we have here? Oh, Felbats. You know what? I think I would... I hmm. might be preferable to get some Felbats rather than the Scurvy Dogs because of their melee defense being at 5, as opposed to the Felbats, whose melee defense is at a massive 40. They certainly aren't as good as chasing or doing damage, but what the Felbats are good at is tying up enemy artillery pieces and not dying instantly like the Scurvy Dogs do. Hmm. Certainly something to be considered. Uh, you know, I'd go into parlay stance, get a little bit more healing. I'm still concerned, know. let's say, about what's going to happen here. King Sensena, and we got defenses. I have to wonder if there are any artillery pieces, but we'll have to find out. There's a sea corpse right below it as well, so we'll take it. And then maybe see our way out of it. Hmm. All right, pretty interesting. I'm going to be repeatedly checking how the map looks, because once again, i got to relearn the map yet again. I mean, I know the geography of the Old World well enough, I think. But new is still new. All right, and by the looks of it, these guys are going to have like a stack and a half, so I think this will be a pretty nice battle at Pavazano. But damn, there's a lot of factions. They are being depleted fairly quickly as well, though. All right, we're going to stay in parlay stance for the additional income from post-battle loot, as the other stances give us nothing. At least nothing in terms of fighting. None of them are fighting stances. Sartosa, I'm not going to upgrade the lynching post because it's not really worth it, I think. Another 10 growth. Probably not worth our time. What is worth our time is the Peg Street Pawn Shop, which is 4,000 gold, though. Construction time. Is there anything that reduces construction costs? No. And this will give us the ability to trade a bunch of stuff. And nonetheless, I still feel like we have to build it, especially since we're using Sartos and Yonas. Alrighty, Aranessa, Nessie. To Pavazano we go. Don't think we need to raise anything else, and this one will obviously be a cinematic battle. Alright, Pyrrhic victory at that, and yeah, it'll lose a decent chunk of our units if we uh, if we just charge. What I do like about this is that the enemy has no artillery of their own, and we need to try to quickly acquire our own artillery, speaking of mortars at the very least. They do have a Tomb Guard and some Nehekara warriors, which will beat our own melee infantry in combat, but we can kite the enemy with Sartos and Militia if needed, and otherwise they'll have to approach us with the zombie pirate gunnery mob and the deck gunners firing away at them, so we should be able to destroy some of their threats before they get to us. I'm inclined to think they have enough units to summon the Realm of Souls of Shabti, so we'll have to be careful about them being summoned on top of the deck gunners and instantly killing them all. Away we go. Agreed! 
Alrighty, here we go. This is probably going to be our first real fight in the sense that there's a lot of enemies to contend with here. And we have to remember that all of our gunnery units are going to be very, very vulnerable to enemy range fire. Skeleton archers are hardly the strongest range unit, but in mass numbers, they can certainly rip apart things like hand gunners and deck gunners very, very quickly. So we'll have to watch out. Anyway, we're going to start off with the deck gunners and the hand gunners trying to do as much damage to the enemy hordes as possible. The deck gunners in particular focusing down the enemy Nehekara warriors and Tomb Guard as they are the two most threatening enemy melee units on the map. We are going to separate our melee a little bit to allow our hand gunners and our Sartosa militia to fire through the gap in our lines. And there's a nice volley of bombs moving down onto the enemy skeleton spears on the flanks. The enemy does have a couple of units of skeleton horses, but they start the battle so badly damaged that we will, or that they, the enemy, will not get too much value out of them. Aranessa uses her spear fisher's net to keep the enemy tomb prints in place and allows the uh, gunnery weight and the deck gunners, I probably should have used the uh, uh, handguns as well, to focus them down and hopefully kill them fairly quickly. Over on this rightmost flank, the enemy has sent a pile of units that are only being held back by two units of Sartosan militia, so we're going to send the Rotting Prometheans to hold the line, defensive unit as they are, and allow the Sartosan militia to back off a little bit once the Curse of Jaff is over anyway, and fire down into the enemy blob while the Scurvy Dogs charge forth and attack those Skeleton Archers. Scurvy Dogs may be weak and they'll still take damage to the Skeleton Archers but they'll be strong enough to, at the very least, uh, get rid of a couple of them. Very nice, very nice. Looks like the enemy Tomb Prince has been pretty much gunned down by the gunners. There he goes. And we can switch to other targets. The enemy Tomb King is distracted by one of our units of Sartosa Free Company, and the enemy continues getting holes in their lines, which allows us to move more Sartosa militia through which will hopefully charge the enemy skeleton archers and fire while they do. Gonna back away from the Nehekar warriors just to allow a few other units like our deck gunners to take a few shots extra. Oh, there we go. Alrighty, otherwise the balance of power is about at 60% in our favor. A couple of shots from those deck gunners absolutely melt those skeleton archers and perhaps I should have had them focus them down instead of the enemy tomb prince. And have left the hand gunners to the Tomb Prince instead. Not entirely sure. Oh, and it looks like the enemy does indeed summon its Ushabti from the Realm of Souls, but fortunately for us, the Ushabti are not summoned upon our fragile deck gunners, but instead upon these rotting Prometheans, who can obviously hold them back. 50 and 39 on the melee attack and defense on the Ushabti versus the 3773 melee defense on the Prometheans. They will damn well hold. Alrighty, we got some zombie-powered gunnery mobs who have moved in to help out and fire down into the enemy skeletons. Which the Free Company Militia are going to be doing as well, or continue doing as well. Looks like the enemy Tomb King is pretty much done as well. Another Spear Fisher's Net comes down on him, not to prevent him from moving, but just so that Aranessa can kill him easier, as it's a minus 25 melee defense debuff. There we go. Alright, he's got 400 HP. Let's see. A couple more hits should bring him down. Ooh, somebody goes flying, and there we go. Very nice. Kicked to death. Flying peg leg kick. Can't be a uh, can't be a pleasant experience. Anyway, it looks like the main bulk of the enemy army, their center has collapsed, and they still have this location going. And yeah, some bombs would have been nice here. Although to be fair, our bombs did run out of uh, our uh, they did run out of ammunition and got plenty of kills and damage. Anyway, and just got the Ushabti and the enemy skeleton warriors and spears to deal with now. And it should be all that much easier as we get more troops moving in and hitting them in the back. Gotta love firewall movement, and as the Sartosan militia get more and more experience, they will be more deadly in terms of their missile fire. Right now it's a little bit weak, but it still adds a nice little bit of damage. 
I'm kind of impressed with how long the enemy is holding here, considering the Tomb King is uh, dead, but I guess the, uh, now since we can see the effect, the Realm of Souls is still active and is still keeping them up. I think we can't actually see the Realm of Souls on them. Like, it's not an actual buff. Um, but it's clearly there, since they're still healing up. And though I suppose not for much longer, there's only so much you can outheal uh, the sheer number of bullets uh, that are smacking into your brittle bones. The Shabti are still holding, but not holding strong, I think, as they begin to melt away as well. And the skeleton warriors are falling. The battle is ours. All right, and they're just completely surrounded from every, well, nearly every direction, getting hit by a range. Shots from everywhere. You had to back off the rotting Prometheans, as we did manage to lose one, but that ain't too bad. They are such a useful unit, and we definitely want to get a few more into our army as ASAP, as they are the linchpin of our army at the current time. I just realized I didn't put the Armor of Fortune on Aranessa. That's my bad, and I definitely should have. Anyway, on the bright side, though, we now have a Talisman of Endurance as well, and generally speaking, we got some good stuff in terms of items. Also, fairly nice battle. 214 losses, certainly not uh, anything crazy. Uh, the only thing I regret in that particular battle uh, was, despite the general effectiveness of the zombie pirate gunnery mob bombers, which got 24k damage and beat everybody except for one of our units of deck gunners, I really should have deployed them on the rightmost flank. Well, actually, what I should have done was deploy them in the center and then sent them where the biggest enemy belonged was or rather than having deployed them on the left flank wherein they were only well they were able to do a lot of damage but they could have done a lot more up on that little hill fight where the enemy was uh, trapped trying to get through that choke point but oh well at the end of the day it didn't cost us much but in a more let's say difficult battle it very well could uh we could sack the place and then occupy it, and then... Hmm, I guess the question is, will Aranessa still be able to move if we sack it? And the problem with sacking was the recovery of the enemy might mean that the scurvy dogs and such will die. As in, if we don't auto-resolve it. Damn it, game! <laughs> Uh, you know what? I think we'll just occupy it. I think it's safer. I don't remember how much movement Aranessa had left, and I'm not willing to risk it. But do that. And Vulture Fleet destroyed. Fantastic. Another treasure map found. Let's hope it's close by. Right, so that's the Lucini one. Okay, this one we'll never get to. I'm just gonna abandon this one. Yeah. Too far. Even though it was a great horde. There's one on Albion here. There's one that was the one near Aaron Red, And then this one's up north. Yeah, this one might be doable. Might be. Anyway. And that's all good. Aaron SAU, I believe, don't need to build anything. And... Huh. Uh, yeah, we could just collect the income here for a second. I'm wondering whether we should replace these two units of zombie pirate gunnery mobs with a couple of Sartosan militia. And I think for now we will. Although, on the other hand, how much would another lord cost? I'm just wondering whether we should transfer them rather than delete them. 400 gold per turn? It's a little bit on the steeper side. But we will need another lord. Also, we have pistols and pole arms. I... Hmm... Pistols have magical melee attacks and much higher melee attack, whereas the Polearm Lord is more of a defensive type character. They both are the exact same cost, however. Hmm. Firestarter. Okay, they're not the same. Which is interesting. Hello, Smuggler. Loyalty decline rate is lowered. Gain loyalty from construction... Oh, pirate coves, yeah, no. Extra loyalty gained following a battle, enemy leadership reduction. Murder, yeah, but you're lore of death, I shouldn't even look at that. It's gotta be lore of vampires and uh, lore of the deep. Intrigant, instigator. Instigator is not bad. In loyalty from recruiting. 
Another intriguant and another instigator, and yeah, you're plunderer, but thacking and raiding, eh? Is that horrible? Maybe this is worth our time. Since we have a plus 100% faction buff to raiding already, maybe that'll be worth our time. Alright, let's do plunderer. If this ends up costing too much, we could just uh, delete you. Madeline of Vol. So, Bills of Vol. Alright, plunderer. Yes. Yes? Uh, well, I guess we could get... Hmm. Better next turn, right? Well, actually, wait. We could... No, 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 wait. Let's do this turn. Uh, Fleet Admiral. Plunderer. I mean, I guess we're going a pistol for you. We'll do a polearm one as well. Hopefully you can get... Ah, good. We can get close enough to transfer these two zombie pirate gunnery mobs to you. And that'll be our first all-undead army. Though we'll have plenty. You build more Sartosa militia. And I guess we could get a couple of additional Sartosa free companies, which are more sacrificable. Once again, I still feel like the militia are better. Generally speaking. Alright, you build those in Nessie and stay there. And Sartosa is going to need no upgrades at the current time. What I want to see... I guess we'll see it next turn. Although we're also basically out of time. Damn it. Uh, <laughs> too many things to do. Alright, let's the turn. Let's the turn. I want to I wanna do one or two more things before we call this first episode. And who's over here, by the way? Order of the Winter Sun. This means very little to me. We'll see. Alright, what do we have here? Ooh, raise a gunnery weight, raise a Morngull Haunter. Morngull Haunters are fantastic, so I'm gonna go with the uh, Haunter for obvious reasons, though that costs us an extra 312 gold per turn. What do you get, Billy Butler? No, <laughs> you gotta love the uh, the Vampire Coast name generator, but the Dick Booty Catcher is the best one that I've ever seen. Uh, a Lore Keeper wins a Magic Power Reserve plus two, wins a Magic Power Reserve capacity plus ten, and plus five. Ah, this one's kind of meh. It's okay. We'll replace him with a better one, I'm sure, at some point. Uh, Renessa, before I forget. A, you're holding on to your points. We get five more levels until you have your Rotting Promethean. You can have your Armor Fortune. Armor, Fortune, Brass, Brass Cleaver, and Talisman of Endurance. Pretty nice. Good finds so far already. You have only three loyalty, and you gain loyalty from a raiding. So, we'll pop you into raiding stance. Aranessa. Oh, Sea Corpse is probably a fight, and it probably won't let us out of resolve. What are you, by the way? Bronte Mingle. Yeah, we got some nice ports here, and it's a very unfriendly Kisla fight. And ooh, I see some Skaven here as well, which could be a potential ally. I'm gonna ignore this for now. What I want to see is this: if we message. trade Pavizano to you, hmm, we could get a defensive alliance. Now, I do fully intend to betray these guys because this is the border princes are going to be great territory for us although i suppose if we go all the way north like this this would also be pretty decent we could force them into immediate defensive alliance hmm i'm not sure you know what i'll think about it that doesn't change the fact that we a want to go here and b you're going to want to i guess move into this territory and raid and I know it's our own territory, but it's not a big deal because it doesn't gain anything to us right now. And then you can go into Capelli and raid right after. Alright, Nessie. See about picking up the Sea Corpse real quick. Maybe it will be out of... Ugh. Find out. And loot the car carcass, rather. Pyrrhic victory, and no, half of our units are going to die. Damn you, game. Damn you. Alrighty. Uh, you know what? I think I'm going to save this little fight. It might still be worth our time, considering the... Uh, uh, the enemy is damaged. I'm going to save it here and call the episode here, as otherwise the episode will run on next time. We'll start with this, and then we'll move northward through Lucini and establish our first vampire coastline. And we'll start building up our second army with all undead units. And we'll probably be transferring at least some more of Aranesses to them over time. Might also want to raise dead as we do have the money, and it would be nice to have multiple armies working on the map at the same time. And Anyway, uh, 
let me know what you guys think with regards to the strategy here. I still think that moving up north would probably be better, but there could be an argument made for moving down into the Badlands and up the Border Princes as well. So I'd love to hear your guys' thoughts on it. Otherwise, stay tuned for more Aaron S. and the Vampire Coast. Don't forget to leave a like and comment. All glory to the algorithm. And thanks for watching.